So the most frustrating thing that uh, I experienced over the Thanksgiving Day weekend was the media coverage of the death of Fidel Castro. And when I say frustrated, I don't mean in terms of I somehow endorse authoritarian communism or uh, the government backed uh, violent suppression. But my frustration with the criticism of the American press of Fidel Castro's uh, revolution regime is that it's not from a earned position of moral superiority. It's hypocrisy. It's hypocritical. That That's what, what struck me as perverse is to watch a nation of mass murderers. And I don't mean the population. I'm talking about the power structure, the elite, point their finger and click their tongues at Castro and, 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 and the way that he crushed dissent. It's very interesting to watch the, predominantly members of the Republican Party, which are ruthless uh, disenfranchisers of the black community and, and, and single women and anyone who would vote against them they, they don't feel those people have the right to vote uh, watching them cry about <clears throat> Castro not uh, being a democratically elected leader is, is disgusting uh, especially in the wake of the Trump election and the grotesque inequity in the popular vote, the national popular vote, to watch a bunch of jerk-offs within the GOP shuffle and chuck and jive about democracy and the people and the oppression of the people is... Um, gross. It's like watching a donkey show. So, the, 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 the mainstream press, I saw a piece on CBS Sunday morning that, that, that tried to be balanced and failed miserably. Uh, it's interesting how the American press is very neutral when it comes to discussing the Bush administration and the Obama administration and atrocities committed by them at home and abroad in terms of, uh, you know, the Guantanamo Bay torture program, uh, Abu Ghraib, all that stuff. They use very neutral, very vanilla language. And when they were, over the last few days, when, when the press was evaluating uh, Castro's legacy, they used surprisingly tainted and skewed and flavored language. I, I, I haven't seen the American press use language that specifically condemn. They won't even use language in, in order to provide the illusion of neutrality they won't even use the language of condemnation as as the Trump administration installs some of the most repulsive <clears throat> bigots and frauds and criminals corporate criminals into their administration, they they use neutral language to describe Nazis, 
neo-Nazis, uh, anti-Semites, because they don't want to offend anyone. And yet when it comes to offending the left and, 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 and vilifying Castro, because he, he committed atrocities abroad, uh, they're willing to take a position. They're willing to suddenly uh, live and die and forge their journalistic bona fides on condemning the Castro administration. So I, I made a disclaimer earlier that I am not endorsing the Castro regime because I'm not an advocate for violent revolution within the existing order because what is what is gained by violence has to be defended as such. I, my biggest criticism of the, the members of, of my own political community being a little too generous towards the Castro regime, the Cuban revolution, the Russian revolution, um, has to do with this idea of populism as a as an absolute good, I think that the number one lesson that we could take away from the election of uh, quite a few right-wing presidents is that populist uprisings do not have a free pass. Uh, just because the people brought someone to power uh, through outrage because they want to reform doesn't mean that that person is um, working for the good of the people at large. So... Even though, in theory, I would support a left-wing populist uprising, the fact that the Cuban Revolution and the Russian Revolution were victories that had to be defended through oppression and through the purging and execution of political enemies, uh, in, in my opinion... Uh, delegitimizes the credibility of the regimes that even though they did make some progressive gains on education and, and, and health care, you know, those things are worth mentioning. But they unfortunately don't balance. I don't think I don't think it washes that the reigns of terror of these revolutions and, and, and the um, the use of the truncheon, the bludgeon to govern is it's a Pyrrhic victory, I think. I think I think that any sort of whether you look at the Chinese Communist Party or the because uh, I'm only going to talk at the moment about existing communist order. If you look at the Chinese Communist Party or you know the Cuban Communist Party as they exist now, they've liberalized quite a bit. But uh, I can't I can't look at the progress that has been made in those countries, and even even if. You know, uh, I myself pointed out that on Twitter recently that, that Mandela supported the Castro. I support Mandela, but Mandela, Mandela sort of uh, is the exception that proves the rule, meaning that Mandela is an example of a left-wing revolutionary whose revolution, even though you could parse out some of the um, failures of the uh, regime that took power uh, with Mandela, his revolution was entirely a political revolution. And I think that, I think that in the modern age with the, the harsh totalitarianism and the the high-tech arsenals involved in uh, the authoritarian governments of today, the, the, the concept of a armed rebellion against 
the existing order of world superpowers is 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 unreasonable and and untenable i don't i don't i don't think that that's a that's a goal for the left to 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 model ourselves to pattern ourselves after someone like Fidel Castro. I, I don't think that he should be vilified by people who don't have any moral credibility in the American press, in the the global capitalist media power structure. I don't think they have the high ground to uh, point the finger at Fidel Castro, but I think I think that I would say that the left holding him up and holding up his accomplishments without scrutiny and 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 I I just feel like we make ourselves look worse when we imitate our oppressors and communicate that any form of oppression is acceptable the 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 the, the, the old saying that is well worn regarding means and ends holds unfortunately the end does not justify the means i don't you know i i would say that about uh single payer health care anything the future of political revolution is not quiet but certainly peaceful because in the battle of bullets the person who can afford the most bullets wins.